I, I'm grounded in reality. You're grounded in some sort of made up world where we're all a fucking hive mind, dude. So, the topics we were talking about, I guess the more interesting one to me is the suffering contrast one. I don't yeah. know if you prefer to talk about the AI one. I mean, there's a few ones. There's, uh, I guess there's being apolitical, there's being <laughs> there's AI, AI capability, AI reasoning. There is the idea of turning into a giant hive mind, and then there's the idea around suffering and contrast. I guess those have been the topics we spoke about. Is there yeah. any preference you have? I mean, I'm cool talking about all of them. Uh, the most recent one was the uh, contrast thing, so let's start with that. Why, why do you think that you don't need contrast to feel the best of the best? I think feeling good is a specific neurophysiological state, and it strongly correlates with certain neurotransmitters, which do have some sort of a rebound effect. So let's say you take, let's say you take a, a GABAergic drug like the benzodiazepine. Uh, if you take that, you might acutely feel happier in a way, but you'll get down regulation. You'll feel worse over time. But that doesn't seem to be quite universal. Uh, across drugs, and the magnitude of that doesn't seem to be universal. Specifically with GABA for example, the rebound is a lot worse than with some other drugs. Some other drugs you might feel equally good, or maybe in a different way, but equally happy, you could say, with less of a rebound. And there's variability there. Oh, I'm, to be any so, there. so, wait, wait, wait. I don't think that there's no variability here when it comes to, like, uh, like, Dr drugs that are going to reduce your emotional uh, spectrum. That's not what I was referring to. What are you referring to specifically? What I'm saying is that there's no inherent rule that things must go up and down to the same degree. So you might have something that boosts your mood temporarily by X. That doesn't mean that there's going to be minus X as a rebound. I never said there was a rebound. If you hold that position, that so, so I'm not saying that you, there's like an equal amount of bad and good and you need to have both. What I am saying is to feel the best of the best, you have to feel some of the, some of the, the bad, bad, and like in, in dumbed down terms, right? Because let's say, for example, you grow up with a little spectrum and, and you have the worst of the worst and the low of the low in this tiny ass spectrum. You're not actually going to feel the best of the best because the spectrum between your emotions is so tiny. Right. But when you have the the happiest moments of your life and you also have the fucking downest moments of your life of like damn near wanting to kill yourself. Right. It sounds dark, but like a lot of people have these moments in their lives. Right. Having this full spectrum allows you to actually experience and appreciate the highs. If you don't have those those like low lows, then you don't actually realize how good the highs are. That That is my entire yeah, point. Implication. Your, your implication there is that contrast is required uh, to have a good state or maybe have some sort of metacognition of the state being good. I don't know exactly which of the two is your position. So do you think you can have a very pleasant state without realizing that you have a very pleasant state? And if so, do you think that it makes the state less valuable or less pleasant? Yes and yes. So, so you can be like very happy without realizing the actual value of your happiness. And, you, and you, that inherent lack of realization is going to make you less happy than those who are feeling the lows and the highs. If you're just feeling, feeling the mids and the highs, you can be just as high, but you will not actually have the cognition of that high. Uh, I don't know that I would disagree with that. I, I guess I disagree with the value in that. Um, so I, I guess a lot of that vision of the, how high the high is comes from the dissolving of the suffering in that state, sense of dissolving of that. And but, I don't know if there's inherent value in that beyond simply how good you feel. Isn't that the entire point in eliminating suffering, though? I'm not sure what you're asking there. Well, well you're saying you want to eliminate suffering, right? So, so people would feel sure. good. Isn't, isn't that the entire point, is just to eliminate that bottom half of the emotions, practically? Well, I'm saying I don't think there's necessarily value to having a 
a greater contrast and having a greater realization of the relative pleasure of a certain state. Which also depends on memory, by the way. I mean, if you felt terrible and you simply don't remember that, then, you know, the, you're saying the value of feeling good and knowing that you feel good is also erased. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you if you don't remember the lows, then the value of your high is going to be not not erased but diminished. Huh? What if you inserted a false memory? Because you seem to very much value the sort of recognition of how good you feel or the sense of how good you feel conceptually, rather than the actual feeling. No, I think I think that both matter. I think that both matter. I'm not saying that either one matters more. Well, I am saying one matters more. Sure, okay. But both matter. You seem to you seem to value that though. So, what if you were to insert a false memory of suffering to increase that? Yeah, would that be like Would a? Sense? Would I like know it's a false memory? Or be a re, would it like feel real? No, no, you. It would feel real. So you you would argue that that would make sense. That that would be a sensible way to increase well being. That would make sense. That would make sense. However. How, that would make sense. However, um, like like in your worldview of eliminating all suffering, you would get to the point generations down the line where you don't remember what suffering is, and you would then inherently start reducing that spectrum of emotions. Well, let's stay on that point for a bit. But you think it would make sense to insert the false memories? Is that right? It would make sense. I don't think it's ethical. I, I don't think it's ethical. However, it would fit. Do you think it would increase well-being? Would it increase well-being? No, I think that actual suffering would increase well-being more. The memory is real. The experience is not. The, the memory is real. The experience is not. You, you do not have the experience of working through all of that and the years of experience of working through all of that. That is what actually makes you a better person, plus being able to recognize the highs and lows. So there, there's other things involved in suffering. I, I, I think that suffering is inherently good. You think it is inherently good? Yes. So you think that even in people who persistently suffer their entire lives? Suffering is inherently good. I, I think that there are limits to where it can become a problem, right? But experiencing some level of suffering is inherently good because it's what allows us to grow as people. If you don't experience, experience suffering, you are a very surface level and not connected person, in my opinion. Yeah, we disagree on that. But I'm still curious, why do you think that inserting the false memories of past suffering would be unethical if it leads to a greater sense of contrast. Because I think that fucking with people's <laughs> memories is unethical. I think that fucking with people's right. memories is unethical. For example, there's a there's a specific pain med that's not actually a pain med. It's used to just erase your memory, but you still feel every single bit of pain in the moment. Uh, it's commonly used in Australia. I don't remember the actual name of the drug, um, but this is this is like a commonly used uh, quote unquote pain med. I think that that's extremely unethical because a person is still going through all of the pain. They just can't remember it. It's just fucking with your memory in the same way that inserting a memory is unethical. It defines fucking with memory. So if someone has very poor memory, for example, and they be given a drug that improves their memory, do you consider that fucking with memory? No, because that's the memories of the experiences that they actually have. I, I, I think that if you can enhance the memories that someone has, that's different than, than adding or subtracting memories, I guess. So, so adding or subtracting memories so, is bad. Okay, so let's say you have a drug that can increase the sense of the suffering of the memory. So your, your sense of past suffering becomes more vivid, which is more accurate. You think that is a good one? You think that's more, more vivid, vivid does not inherently mean more accurate. I, I don't think that people who have actually experienced suffering need a more vivid memory of their suffering. I think that if well, you, you think that, you might not have experienced suffering. Contrast, so. I think that if you, if you think that, you may not have actually experienced suffering in your life. It sounds like you don't actually contrast things so much then. I do. I, I value the contrast and I value the reality that is our memories. No, it'd be the same suffering. You just remember it more. If you're trying to make it more vivid, you would have to make the suffering... No, wait, 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 wait. wait. If you want to make it more vivid, you would have to change the amount of suffering that the person actually went through. Thus, you're changing their memories. Because people will remember the vividness of their suffering. They don't always remember the vividness of their happiness, but they remember the vividness of their suffering. So, if you want to make their suffering more vivid, you would have to make the experience worse. 
People inherently, as people, remember the bad more than they remember the good. Wait, wait, no. People inherently re wait, 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 wait. People inherently remember the bad more than they inherently remember the good. I would probably have a different take here if you your take was enhancing the happiness. However, people inherently are going to remember their suffering more, so there is no reason to enhance the suffering that they have already experienced and they already remember. Conclusion of what you were saying, because you seem to suggest besides feeling good in the moment, there's a notion of a strong contrast with cause suffering, right? Uh, the only way you could have the contrast is by having a memory of the past suffering. Yes, and we, we all have that if we have gone through suffering. Someone has a dulled memory of it. It's an in a way that reduces that memory. You could give them a drug and make that memory more vivid. In what way is their brain impaired? Give me a give me a disease or something that their brain is impaired. Because it's going to be more situational than just their brain is impaired. Well, I don't know any specific diseases in this case. It's a hypothetical scenario. It's not, you know, the, the drug doesn't necessarily exist. I'm just trying to I think the drug would increase well-being by increasing the vividness of the memory of suffering. Most people, if they are at the point where their brain is impaired to that extent where they cannot remember their suffering or they cannot vividly remember their suffering, are going to have more issues than just remembering their suffering. And I think that those should be addressed rather than the fact that they don't remember their suffering. Because if you address those other issues, yeah, that's, that's then you will get there. That, that is answering the question because your hypothetical is null and void when the brain damage can be just fixed. Okay, let's... Broad and hypothetical than in the way you described. So they have specific brain damage that causes that, and maybe a few other things. Uh, it's not. It's not good. It broadens it too much. No, I think we should stick to the hypothetical as I described. I just, I just nullified your hypothetical. Good sir, I just nullified your hypothetical because it doesn't matter in my worldview because you can just fix the brain damage. Right, if we're going in the hypotheticals uh, of wait, 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 wait. Suggesting the hypothetical is unlikely to occur or something. Like no, no. What I'm actually saying is that in the hypothetical, we have this drug that can just enhance your negative emotions, right? So in this same hypothetical, I would assume that we're in the same scientific standpoint where we can just fix your brain damage. So your hypothetical is null and void because of that. No, and I didn't say it enhances negative emotions necessarily that is exactly what you said you, you said it enhances the suffering and suffering is negative emotions enhancing enhancing the suffering and enhancing your perception of the suffering yeah it enhances the vividness of the memory of specific instances of suffering so i would like to understand whether you think the drug if it purely does that you know what you bring up other brain issues if the drug purely does that do you think it would increase well being why do I bring up other issues? Because we already established the fact that if that your normal suffering memories are going to be vivid in your mind if you have actually experienced suffering, right? And then if there is something that dulls that suffering in this fucking worldview where you can just magically enhance a specific memory in someone's brain, you can also magically fix the person's brain and then that is just no. Like at that level of technology, you can just magically fix someone's brain. You're just sort of trying to around I'm not trying to go around it. I'm trying to see the worldview of the hypothetical. Well, there's no moral view there. It's just... Uh, my initial answer was addressing... No, no, no. No, no. My initial answer was addressing the hypothetical, and then you changed the hypothetical to try to make my initial answer not answer it. I had initially said, no, because we inherently remember the negatives far more than we remember any positives, so there is no point in enhancing the negatives. That's going around the hypothetical. That was your initial hypothetical. Yes. That was exactly what your initial hypothetical was, bro. Let me say this. If someone has memories of suffering in the past, and these are somewhat dulled, and they're not remembered that vividly, and a drug could be given to them to increase the vividness of those memories. Would that increase their well-being? That's the question. I already said no, because again, your hypothetical, one, cuts against psychology, and two, if you're going to have this hypothetical, you should be increasing the positives because of the fact that that is what we actually forget. Your hypothetical is null in psychology, my friend. I haven't studied formal logic. It would be nice to be able to use formal logic to explain why you're wrong. I know psychology, which is how I'm saying that your hypothetical is null. 
I'm not going to engage with a completely unrealistic hypo hypothetical that goes against human psychology because we are humans. We have human yeah, brains. So, so, so you're acknowledging that you're going around the hypothetical rather than answering it. Give, you're not going to engage with it. Is that right? Sure. Even though I already engaged with it, sure. I initially said no because, and I explained it in saying that because human emotions and human minds remember the negatives more than they remember the positives, so there's no use in enhancing the negatives. What you would actually be do, what you actually should be doing, is enhancing the positives. That was my initial response that you didn't like. Not, you could say the answer no. You don't think that would enhance well-being, and then you would have to justify why you don't. That's what I just did. Mm, that is exactly what I just did. I said no. You should not be doing this because X and X and X. Let's say your answer is no. So you don't think positives of a good state increase maximizing contrast, or you think there's some sort of peak, you know, that effect goes off, or I'm not sure. There's a spectrum of emotions from the happiest happy to the saddest sad, right? Your hypothetical. Uh, your spectrum means exactly that this would be on one dimensional axis. Yeah, there's a, a, a fucking. I'm sorry, I don't need to do you agree with that? A line plot. That's a one dimensional <laughs> axis. There, there's a line plot between the happiest ha happy and the saddest sad, is sad, and they're all connected, and you're somewhere along the line, okay? The, the issue that you're making and the, the, like, I guess, fallacy that you're making is that you're saying that the only way that this can be expen extended is by expen extending it negatively. Yes, the negative is important in this, but the positive is also just as important. It's my position. That seemed to be your position. No, that's what you're saying by saying that, that it suddenly doesn't matter because I won't extend the negatives. Sorry? That's what you're saying when you, when you're saying that it suddenly doesn't matter because I won't just like make the negatives worse. No, because my my take is that you can you need the positives and you need the negatives and you can extend the negatives without extending the positives. Or you can extend the positives yes. without extending the negatives. Okay. Well, I agree with that. I mean, that seems to be my position from the start. But your position seemed to be that the positives are increased by the sense of contrast with the negatives. Yes. Uh, the positives are increased in the sense of contrast, yes. Contrast depends on memory. Yes. So, if someone had suffering in the past and they have poor memory of it, and the contrast is decreased. Not psychologically sound, but sure, continue. Okay. But we're speaking specifically about the negatives in the hypothetical scenario. Again, the 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 reason. Okay, no, no, no. I'm I'm gonna stop you right now. I'm gonna st I'm gonna stop you right now, because I the the reason that I cannot respond to your hypothetical is because it's just simply inaccurate. Like a a good hypothetical. Uh, wait, a good hypothetical. A good. A good hypothetical is grounded in factual basis. It is a scenario that has not happened, but it is grounded in factual basis. Your hypothetical is simply not grounded in factual basis. That's the problem here. Needs to be, in a, needs to be a very likely scenario or anything like. That. I didn't say likely. I said grounded in factual basis. Let's get let's get back on topic. My point was that you can ex there there's a spectrum of negative and positive emotions, right? You have to feel all of those in order to actually feel the full weight of the positive emotions. Okay, I'm not saying you have to feel the worst of the worst of the worst that all every human has ever felt, but you have to experience bad to actually truly experience good. What do you what do you specifically have against that? Now, let's get out of hypotheticals. What do you specifically have against that? Yeah, I don't think that's accurate. But like, why? Why? To, why? Why do you think I that? Don't think, I think you could, for example, hypothetically, again, you could be in a just an absolute peak state inside your your nervous system with support. You could hypothetically be in that persistent. Okay, wait, wait, wait. The system will somehow break down and to that. I mean, there's probably some structural issues there. Let, let's, 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 wait, wait, let's take the peak state, because we have the peak state. The peak state exists. The peak state is drug use. Let's take meth, for example. The peak state exists when you are not, high. It's not the hypothetical absolute peak state, but... Sure. I said get out of hypotheticals. I said that we're talking in reality. So, the peak state is when you are high. As much as a lot of people don't like it, the peak state is when you are high. Now, here's the issue. When you are high, and when you are a drug user... First of all, you will never get the same high that you get the first time that you get truly high on hard drugs. Second of all, you are continuously need more and more of that to get that same high. 
So you can't just forever be at this high without some sort of contrast here. Even in drug use, you need yeah. that contrast. Yeah, I addressed that at the start. I said that it varies between drugs. So some drugs, they develop tolerance. There's drugs that develop negative tolerance um, that you do not get less sensitive to, but you get more sensitive to them over time. Those drugs, drugs don't put you in a really. th those drugs don't put you in a peak state. They put you in a hallucinative state. Uh, I'm not sure what categories of drugs they, are they, but there are they drugs do. that have minimal to no tolerance. They, those are the drugs that, that put you in a hallucinative state. I'm not sure. Not I I I, I am I I am sure, my friend. Those drugs put you in a hallucinative state, whereas drugs that put you at your peak have a tolerance, and you have to continuously have more. Your argument here seems to be that in our current nervous system that in general there seem to be up and down something along those lines which is not something i disagree with and particularly if your pleasure is induced by anking up certain neurotransmitters or you know having substances that mimic certain neurotransmitters and that pleasure is not sustainable and it's going to be somewhat of a rebound right I don't really yeah. see how that no interacts no with. no pleasure is sustainable but yes do you acknowledge that there are people who are persistently in much better states than other people? Yes. Why do they not require the contrast of the poor states? They still have the contrast. The people that are in persist when I say people in persistently better states versus people in persistently less better states, the less better states are mental illness. That is a disease. Yeah. That is that is not your your natural state. Like like as peak humans. Yeah. That, that's why that certain people are in better states than others. Because some people have mental I think, illnesses. I think we should still go back to the unaddressed hypothetical here. So I'd like you to address it. And as I understand it, you still... I already addressed it. I said no. I said no. Don't do it. Okay. But why would that not enhance pleasure? I think it would... Okay, let me try and phrase it like this. Do you think that the negative effects of the CRISPR memories of suffering would be larger than the benefits from the contrast. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so then in practice, to have the best sort of area under the curve happiness, it seems that it's optimal to have a minimum amount of suffering. Not minimum. Do you agree with that? A medium. For example, Sorry. I would not wish someone to be in a member, uh, a Jewish person in the Holocaust. I, I don't wish that. I don't think that that actually enhances or like gets you to a peak state of happiness, right? Because again, there is a spectrum and there there is like some sort of limited size of this spectrum. And if you experience bad enough, you cannot get as happy, right? But experiencing the full range of this spectrum with a good amount of happy and sad gets you to that happiness. So no, you should not fucking vividly enhance every fucking suffering mem memory because you could theoretically get to the point where you're someone feels like they're a fucking holocaust victim that's not that's not the point here the point here is that you experience some suffering in your life you experience hardship you experience things that you can grow from both mentally socially and physically i mean the way i phrased it here clarifies your position for me so as i understand it your position here is that the increased vividness of the memories would increase suffering more and the enhanced contrast would decrease suffering yes and I'm basing that in actual psychology. I know your hypothetical isn't, but I'm basing that in actual psychology, so yes. Well, the hypothetical doesn't need to be based in reality. No, but I'm basing my answer in psychology given your hypothetical. So there we go. Fucking middle ground. So do you think that this is uniquely true of our specific current nervous system? Or do you think that this is some sort of universal law? And if so, why do you think that? A human brain law. How about that? Okay. Oh, that's fair enough. Uh, let's say hypothetical. If you could override that, if you could not have any necessity for contrast, let's say, or if you could persistently have the peak mass state without any rebounds or any desensitization, do you think that would be desirable from the perspective of at least peak well-being? Even though, as I understand it, you think it would be undesirable from you know, being a good person and such. But do you think it purely from a peak well-being state the perspective it would be good? Purely from a peak mental health stance, yes. But I don't I, really know what you mean by Just your mental health. 
not your overall well-being, not humanity's well-being, not anything else, just mental health. Well, how does that differ from your overall well-being? Your overall well-being includes uh, your social, physical, mental, and, and like all of those healths. I'm saying specifically your mental health. Mm -hmm. they're, all, they're all impacting on your, your state of well-being here. They're, they're, sure. they're all circuit impacting, but there's a negative... Circuit the need for social connection, etc. In order to be experiencing peak well-being in this context, no? You still don't have the physical well-being or any of those other aspects. What do you mean by the physical well-being? You're not going to have a fucking heart attack. There you go. That's a physical well-being. Well, I think we kind of established that there wouldn't be any downsides. Maybe I just said that about the brain. So uh, let's say the downsides wouldn't be... No, you would have downsides to your physical well-being from being at peak mental well-being at all times. Well, we said in a hypothetical there wouldn't be. No, so we, we never said anything... Of, no, no, wait. We never said anything about physical well-being in this hypothetical. Which I said mental well-being. Yeah, I'm not sure what the distinction is there other than you mean by physical well-being not being in a disease state or something like that. Yes, that is exactly what physical well-being is. Okay, I wouldn't really uh, differentiate between them in that way. I guess I wouldn't use the term mental, but if you had an extremely blissful state while you're having a heart attack, wouldn't your well-being still be optimized in that moment again like i already clarified your mental well-being yes but your physical well-being would drop if your mental well-being was consistently at peak peak state i guess what you call mental well-being is simply what i would call well-being great so you don't care about anyone's actual health like what the fuck no it's just different definitions i guess well-being of your oh, conscious oh. experience you know like Balance or hedonic tone. If you if your mental well being is at peak at all times, you do not feel any negative emotions from something like a heart attack. That does not mean that your physical well being is good. Your physical well being can be absolute shit, but your mental well being is good. So you feel nothing. You you feel fucking yeah, nothing. So I that. think you and just that's have a problem. Definitions of that word. I, so, I just defined it right. When I say, no, 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 wait. I just defined right? it. Judging off of my definition. Would you agree that your mental well-being and your physical well-being are two different things? Your mental well-being being your mood and, and how good your mood is, your physical well-being being your physical health, right? So if you are at men peak mental well-being at all times, your mental health is perfect, that is an overall negative to your physical well-being because you do not experience the negatives that come with having a poor physical well-being, and thus you do not have the ability to... to uh, intervene when your when your physical well-being is poor uh, because you do not have the ability yes, to recognize in current, it in our current state yes so there are people as far as i know that have genetic mutations that make them not feel pain that's not and what i'm talking have... about pain is not what i'm talking about i'm talking about mental pain i'm talking about well, emotions so for yeah, example there are a multitude pain. there are a multitude I, I think that's there are a multitude I, I of there are, emotional pain and physical pain in that way. Oh my god, then you're just retarded. What the fuck, dude? People who experience who do, that disease where you don't experience physical pain, they still experience mental pain. How can you not distinguish between the two? Uh, because they're both events happening in your experience. Right, but so if, if you have a disease where you can't experience... Wait, 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 wait. You brought this up. If you have the disease where you cannot experience physical pain, but you can experience mental pain, how can you then, then say that they are the same thing when there are very obviously two very different things happening within your body? Uh, because I, I don't use the term mental pain. When I talked about well-being, it was a very generalized term that encapsulated both to me. And by that, I simply mean the well-being of your conscious experience so that's that's sort of distinct from your physical state because you could have a highly pleasant conscious experience while dying that's exactly what i'm saying that's not a, that's not that a, is exactly what i'm saying state. i'm not sure what you're saying there i'm what you what you well-being what you just described is mental mean, versus physical well-being what you just described is mental versus physical well-being you just described it for yourself yeah, I don't think that term makes much sense. Because what would you prefer I say? Because you just described the well, difference. I, I, would use, I would use the term well-being to refer to any kind of pleasantness or unpleasantness of the conscious experience, so that encapsulates 
physical pain that encapsulates emotional pain that encapsulates physically pleasurable sensations emotionally pleasurable sensations etc i don't really distinguish between those do you just not have the ability to understand nuance because that's what it's seeming like you you simply do not have the ability to interact with nuance dude I don't know what and when we're talking about actual definitions you are just simply wrong physical and emo and mental or emotional well-being are very different things definitionally these are actual terms that exist i'm not making them up on the fly so, okay so i need to make a term here specifically i guess for referring to well-being of the conscious experience that's encapsulated both that's all yeah, you mean just like overall health, basically, is what you mean, right? But one, that's not over... I don't, know that I, I don't know that I would use the term health, because you could be in poor health and still have extremely high well-being. You know, well, well-being... If you're dying, how do you have a good well-being in your conscious experience? If you're fucking dying, dude. Okay, so great. Well, depending on the drug you're on, do something specific to your brain. Let's say you're no dude most overdoses feel like fucking hell you just don't know what you're talking about every example you've given you don't know what the fuck you're talking about and it's painful like i'm sorry yeah, I but I it's actually that. painful well yeah i think your are painful but whatever yeah I, I'm grounded in reality you're grounded in some sort of made up world where we're all a fucking hive mind dude no, we are not. Hypotheticals prove nothing. Hypotheticals can sort of prove, can sort of explain a point. Hypotheticals do not actually prove anything. Well, yeah, they're used to explain a point and understand their reasoning here. Yeah, your point has been disproven many, many times already, even by just basic fucking dictionary definitions. Get out of the hypothetical world. Like I already said before, we're going to get out of the hypothetical world. And you just okay. continuously dive into the hypotheticals. Uh, let's go back to the previous point you made. So you're arguing that there cannot be any well-being of experience. In your well-being of experience that you that you defined, yeah, that in, that you said includes your physical health, including like pain. Pain is part of your physical. No, no, pain. You you said pain. You said associated with your physical health. The sensation of your heart. The sensation of your heart stopping is not a pleasant. Ple a pleasant experience. What What are you? The overall pleasant while your heart is stopping. Okay, let's move to the next topic. Let's move to the next topic because we're going in fucking circles, and you have an inability to recognize that. So AI hive mind. Well, no, why Why do you want the AI hive mind? Why no, dude? We're going in fucking circles, and I'm moving on. Unless you want to hang up, we're gonna go to AIs. AI hive mind. Why do you want that? that seems a bit your position here. Dude, we're going in circles. I have content. I have I have a stream to run. Okay, I'm not gonna keep going in circles on this topic. I'm sorry, I have to put my foot down at some point. So, if you want to move on, we can move on to AI Hive Mind, or we can stop the conversation. Your choice at this point. That's fine. Okay. Still cleaning for a while. AI Hive Mind. Why do you want that? Uh, it depends how you define things, but as I see it, you could have more well-being if you have a single unified mind, because you could have more computation support well-being versus having separate entities so, so, wait wait so your reason for an ai hive mind is that we can do more computation and that inherently means better well-being um let's say you have a certain amount of computation and you split that up into a billion minds i would argue that each one of those minds has less capacity for well-being than if you were to run a unified mind of all the computation. So I think it would be better for... Wait, 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 can you, can you, can you, can you, can you, can you describe, can you describe what you mean by computation here? Because I might be misunderstanding, like, just based on what I think when you say that. I'm not sure how that's defined. Let me see what a typical definition of that is. Chat, I am losing brain cells by the fucking minute. To follow a well-defined model. To be clear here, I mean a set of calculations. Do done. do you think that our brains work on calculations? We are not living, breathing computers, dude. So you don't think computers could be conscious? And if so, what do you think consciousness emerges from? I don't think they can be the same level of conscious that um, humans can. 
because you need uh, a frontal fucking cortex and the ability to actually reason through things to the extent that me- that humans can, even when they are wrong, um, to which computers just simply don't have. If you simulate the activity of neurons of a human on a different substrate, do you think that would not be conscious? And do you think that consciousness is specific to the material of a human brain? Can you rephrase that in a different way? Well, let's say... Do you think if you were to simulate the activity of the neurons of a human brain on a different material than a human brain? What do you, you, what do you mean by a different material? Give me an example. Uh, yeah, a different material would be computer chips, in this case. So right, so how do, you, how do you simulate the, neurons? Uh, how, how do you do that? Uh, it depends what level of analysis you're going at, so I don't know how much computation a neuron simulation involves. I think some people consider that it would why, be really why do you no 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 why do you know nothing about what you're talking about you would need to simulate all the machinery in there okay so so you're saying that there's different levels of comp- complexity of of simulating neurons onto a, a computer chip no I want human brain activity on a neuron how do you do that how the, so how do you think, think that you do that material specifically that the ne- human neurons are made of that is required for consciousness do i understand that right no i'm i'm saying the actual human brain is what's required like, like not even the material just like the actual functionings of the human brain which we have not even gotten close yes. to simulating on a computer so how the fuck do you think that you're going to do that that's what i'm asking because your your idea i understand i think to some extent your idea right but it's just so unrealistic that it breaks my brain well, yeah. Engaging with hypotheticals here. Is your is your wait 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 is your is your entire no 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 wait wait stop for a second stop for a second stop for a second is your entire is your entire opinion just based in hypotheticals is that what we're getting at right now? I'm not sure what that means. Everything that you have given me, every sort of explanation that you've tried to give me, is entirely hypothetical. So is are all of your points just hypothetical? Well, is is that what we're doing? If we're talking about future technology, like we are here, then there's going to have to be some hypotheticals, I think. It has to be based in real technology, and, and that there's nothing pointing towards that in real technology. Mm, I don't know that that's true. An AI cannot do fucking multiplication, dude. An you, AI you can pattern simulate, recognize. You, you can simulate the neuronal activity of really simple uh, organisms on a computer. And if so, you think that could potentially be scaled up? I think that we need to be able to understand the human brain before we even think about this, and we don't even do that yet. We don't even understand the human brain today. How the fuck do you think that this hypothetical is just going to pop out of nowhere, dude? I I feel like you have to ground yourself in something to do with reality, and if it is that you want to simulate the neurons onto a computer chip or into an AI of some sort, I feel like you have to have some sort of actual basis in this. For example, understanding neurons and understanding how the human brain works, and we don't even have that, dude. That's why this is so fucking insane so, to me, is because it's so ungrounded clarify, in reality. First of all, you think we cannot simulate a, a, a single neuron sufficiently right now? No, I said we cannot sing- and, simulate the human brain. I don't know if we can simulate a single okay. neuron. A single neuron doesn't matter. A single okay. individual neuron does not so, do fucking shit. I think you would agree that human brains are conscious. I don't know if you're a solipsist, that you think you are only conscious, but presumably not. So you think other human brains... Humans are conscious are because conscious of their brain, or, yes. Humans are conscious, and you think that that consciousness is either a product of their brain or at least very strictly tied to their brain in yes. some way, right? Yes. So if you could simulate the activity of their neurons on a different material, do you think that you would have consciousness there as well? Or do you think consciousness depends on the specific material the human brain is made of? If you could effectively simulate the human brain onto a, for example, computer chip, because that's what we're talking about, yes, that could have consciousness. However, we cannot do that. Okay, we cannot do that yet. So, okay, we agree that that would be the case then, right? Sure. So, if you could scale that up and you could have, let's say, a billion brains, what do you think could have more capacity for well-being? A single simulation that has a billion times the complexity of a human brain or a billion separate human brains do you think it would make more sense from a well-being perspective to have a single simulation well-being is not exponential 
You're not like exponentially right. raising your well-being by combining brains. There, there is a limit, and and like you can get human brains to that limit of well-being, right? But just like exponentially combining human brains doesn't work. That, that that's not how you, you reach you peak well-being. You think there's a physical well-being limit in the universe? Yes. Or are you basing that on? Yes. For the human experience, is a physical well-being on? limit. Your audio broke up again. Can you repeat that sentence? For the human experience, there's a physical well-being limit. Well, I don't know what you mean by for the human experience. We're not talking about, you know, human nervous systems here. No, we're talking about neurons and the, and the human brain, which you're trying to simulate, right? For that brain, there is a limit to, mm -hmm. but I'm to physical or to well-being. I'm creating a conscious entity that is vastly more complex than a human brain. And the question is whether the computation would be better used for that or whether it would be better used for simulating individual human brains. So a computation a of, of ones and zeros is not going to have a well-being. I hate to break it to you. It's just not going to have a well-being. Ones and zeros well, don't make well-being. A moment ago, you agreed that if you could simulate the activity of a human brain on a different material, that it would be conscious. Yeah, and ones and zeros are not a human act brain activity. The fuck are you talking about? Like, okay, here's the thing, here's the thing. Okay, let, let, let's go back to the core of this for a second. What I think will actually help me understand your argument. What is your time frame for this? And what time frame do you think this will happen? Mm, I don't have a strong suspicion on that. Any guess. Uh, any guess is better than... Any guess. Okay, well, the guess of most AI experts here seems to be like 2050-ish. I don't know if it's shifted. No, and you're just wrong. At, at that point, you're just wrong. AGI, the timeline for AGI has shifted downwards quite a bit the, in recent years. The timeline for AGI so, does not matter because if we want to recreate human neurons, we have to actually understand how the human brain works. And that will not happen by 2050. Yes. Well, it depends if you believe in the intelligence explosion. So some people believe that if you have a, an AI that's as intelligent as some of the more intelligent humans today, you could make a number of duplicates of that. It could recursively self-improve itself and rapidly gain an intelligence in a very small amount of time. It can get an and intelligence, not that, a human if intelligence. If that was the case, it would have the capacity to make technology like that. Intelligence is different from human intelligence, and, and an AI cannot do, perform brain surgery, it cannot perform brain scans, it cannot do any of this shit. That's what humans do. Humans need to do that. Humans need to figure out what the fuck to do to figure out the brain. And AI cannot be the one to do that. AI couldn't perform brain surgery. That seems like a very specific claim. Because an AI is a computer chip. An AI is not a robot. I'm not really sure what you're referring to here. An AI is a computer chip. We were talking about a computer chip before, right? An AI is not a fucking robot that is detailed and precise enough to perform fucking brain surgery. I'm not sure how that's defined exactly. I, I guess you could say the computation of the robot would be the AI, not the physical material of the robot. Seems a bit semantic to me. Your entire argument seems semantic because it's entirely hypothetical and entirely guessing what's going to happen in the future without any sort of factual basis for it. Oh yeah, we're using hypotheticals here. I'm not. You You're the only one using basically. hypotheticals because you use hypotheticals to explain a point rather than prove a point. I am saying things that actually prove a point. You are explaining well, a point rather than proving you know, it. Yet, and people were talking about the possibility of some flying machine. It would be like, oh, that's not based in reality. No, um, because there are flying things on Earth. It's Sorry. based in reality because there are flying things on Earth. They're called birds. Okay, so if there were super intelligent things, if there were things with greater than human intelligence, then that means we could create it. If there were animals on the planet that were more intelligent than humans, that means we could create intelligence greater than humans seems to follow from what you're saying here. Pretty much. More intelligent in every way. Yes. So you think the, the specific problem is that there's no beings more intelligent than humans, and therefore, by definition, we can't create them? Or do I misunderstand? We're not even creating beings. Okay, wait, or... let, let's go back a second. We're not creating beings, we're creating, th we're creating things. AI is not a being, it's a thing. Uh, well, I guess when I say being, I mean a conscious entity of any kind. I would call that why, why are we talking about why why are we relating airplanes to that then why why did you make the airplane thing are airplanes conscious beings i didn't say that and then why did we make that and, comparison and the airplane the airplane thing was in reference to you uh regularly stating that we can't use hypotheticals because they're not quote unquote factually based or something like that right so the plane is factually based your thing is not 
I don't know what factually based means. Means there's Maybe any facts supporting that it could happen, dude. First of all, you need the fact of understanding the human brain if you're trying to recreate the human brain. We don't have that. Second, you'd have that to have the fact of it. it wait, happen. wait, wait. Second, you'd have to have the fact of the AI having to being able to do fucking brain surgery or some shit. We don't have that. Sec third, we have the fact of the AI being able to do this fucking brain explosion. We don't have that. It is all theories, dude. All you are working on is theories. Nothing fact-based. I don't know what you mean by fact-based. I mean, those things... I just described it. I just described what fact-based was. Believe, there's reason to believe those things would occur. And many experts in those fields seem to believe that. If you look at polls of AI researchers, you'll find that many place the timelines pretty similar to how I would place them. But it seems your opinions here go against... Yeah, and climate scientists... In the fields. Climate scientists place the timeline at the world exploding in the year 2000. Okay? That's hypotheticals. They, they, are, they are predicting on hypotheticals. They are not predicting on facts. That's the difference. You are using uh, hypothetical predictions to back your hypotheticals. Rather than using facts to back your hypotheticals. You're using opinions and mean, hypotheticals to back your hypotheticals. Facts to back hypotheticals. That's not the point of hypotheticals. So I understand that the point of hypotheticals is to go through someone's reasoning and try and better understand it in this case. Yeah, I understand your reasoning is stupid. That that that's the thing it, that that your your reasoning is not based in any sort of reality. That that's the difference here. That that's why you need to use some sort of fact involved. So, yeah, that if, if, if you're trying to actually about the future because it's quote unquote not based in fact or something like that. Like, no, you can back predictions on the future based on fact. What yours yours is not backed in that though. But what is things that are around right now? Things that you can prove. Fact is things that you can okay, so prove. You can't, you can't you can't make predictions about the future then because you can't definitively prove certain things. No, you can okay. you can make predictions about the future based on existent facts. For example, you can make a prediction about the future that in a couple months it is going to be summer in North America because every fucking year prior it is summer in North America at, at in a couple months. Yeah, you can say that the light you can say the likelihood of that is really high. Yes, but sure. it's a, it's, it's a, here, here's the difference. It's a no, fact, wait, wait, likely out here. Maybe it's lower. It's no, the, lower the, the, the difference, it's going to be summer. The difference, it's not zero. the difference is that one is a fact based prediction and one is a theory based prediction or a hypothetical based prediction. That is the difference that I'm pointing out. The seasons are a mm -hmm. fact based prediction. Yeah, that seems like a bit of a weird, uh, say another word in english how is that weird how uh, how is it weird to back things in fact well as i understand it you're saying that you can only make predictions that have an extremely high probability because otherwise they're not quote unquote based in fact or something like this they need to be based in in things that we have really reliable okay okay actually actually no let, otherwise you can't speculate on them let me let me give you a speculation let, based in fact. let me give you a speculation Okay, that is not based in fact. Next year, the entire Earth will explode from a giant meteor. Actually, no, no, I take that back. The entire Earth will explode because the, the moon will come in collision with the Earth and the Earth will just explode. How's that? I think that's a valid prediction. Yes, but the probability of it is very low. Okay, so I'm going to say that your prediction is valid, but the probability of it is pro approximately 0.0001%. Anyways, this conversation is going in circles, and I have yeah, shit to get back to. Misguided, the probability. Your probability I mean, is very misguided, my friend. I'm, I'm, dude. Against expert consensus here, your probability seems to be entirely your own opinion here. That's just, you know, randomly made up. Your probability goes against expert consensus when you think that we can recreate the human brain onto a computer chip when we don't even understand the human brain. Mm. Anyways, I am done with I this conversation. I, I am consensus. wasting. I know expert consensus would include knowing what the fuck the human brain, how the fuck the human brain works. Anyways, we're going in circles. Stop. Stop. I'm, I'm just going to deafen you. I'm just going to deafen you if you don't stop. I'm done with this conversation. We're going in circles. It's a waste of my fucking time because you don't know how to deal with reality. Have a good night, buddy. All love to you. Okay. I, I don't have, I don't have any dislike towards you. All love, but you are retarded. Good night, my friend. Yeah. Hi, YouTube. Thank you, comrade. I lost so many brain cells, dude. So many. I worked hard for those.
those were hard to gain, okay? You know, someone like me, those can be hard to gain. I was having so much fun. I thought we were going to have a good conversation, a good little debate about some fun, interesting topics. And then we got into hypotheticals, dude. Neon. Neon, no. You did not actually miss that whole thing. I'm very happy for you. I may need to call my therapist again after that fucking call-in.